In this video, we're going to look at how to design sequential logic with VHDL. So to do this, let's start off with the simplest possible sequential design, which is just a single D flip-flop. And from here, if we understand how to build a D flip-flop, this is our building block that we're going to use to build basically every sequential circuit from here on out. So really quickly, remember that a D flip-flop is this basic sequential block, and it's going to take some clock signal signified by this triangle, and it has one input that will be our data and an output that is Q. Okay, and its behavior is that D is copied to Q when the clock signal goes from low to high. So if the clock signal is going along and then goes from zero to one, low to high, at the instant of this edge, then here we have D gets copied to Q on that edge. But to any other time, D can go up or down, and Q is going to maintain its current value. But on that rising edge of the clock, then Q is going to get updated with whatever the current value of D is. OK, so that's the behavior of the flip-flop. Let's see if we can implement this in VHDL. So the entity part is relatively straightforward. We've got an entity, and it's got three ports. So we've got clock, data, and Q. And all of those are just standard logic. They're single bits. Um, and clock and data, of course, are inputs. Q, our output, is defined as an output. And we can go ahead and create an empty architecture here. So this is going to be some architecture that we will be able to synthesize. And then we've got to figure out what goes in here. And so, we, yeah, we could just start like racking our brains for what, you know, how would we describe the behavior of a flip-flop with VHDL. And so you might write something like Q gets the value of D when uh, like clock equals one. So yeah, so this says like when the clock gets is equal to one, then Q should get the value of D. Um, but like, this doesn't really say anything about the rising edge of the clock. Um, and and it's a combinational thing, right? Like this is this is the construct we've been using for describing combinational logic. It's describing Q here in terms of some Boolean equation of D and clock and so forth. And that's not really what we want. We want some kind of way to describe the behavior in terms of changes to the signals, not just in terms of their constant values, algebraically, like in Boolean algebra. But we do have a tool in VHDL that allows us to specify behavior of a circuit in terms of changes to signals. And that's, that's a process. So let's stick a process in here. So we've got a process. We're going to have to figure out what the sensitivity is going to be. Um, and then inside the process, we just say Q gets the value of D. So in this process, when something triggers it, then we're going to take D, copy that to Q, and that will be our process. OK, so now for the sensitivity list, what, what should this be? Well, Q changes when, and only when, uh, the clock goes from low to high. Remember, so we've got, if we have our clock signal, when it goes from low to high, that's when we want to trigger the process. So Q should get D when that happens there. OK, so we want to say like process. So if we say like process clock, right? so this says when the clock signal changes, then execute this process, execute the statements inside the process block. So that's our sensitivity list. So Process clock, begin, Q gets D, and that, that's all we have to have in our process. And because D is not in the sensitivity list, D can go up and down any time, and Q is not going to get updated. Q is only going to get updated when we have a change in the clock, which is exactly the behavior of the flip-flop. Um, but th this is missing one key piece, and that is that in a flip-flop, at least in a normal positive edge-triggered flip-flop, the clock 
Q is only updated on the rising edge of the clock and not on the falling edge. All right, so if we have our typical square wave clock signal, it's gonna get updated here and it's gonna get updated here on the second rising edge, but not on the falling edges. And if I just write process clock, any time clock changes from low to high or high to low, then it will rerun this. Okay, so we've got to filter out sort of those half, these half of the changes where it's falling. So the HDL gives us syntax to do that. Uh, so we can write uh, with a simple if statement. So just write if rising edge and then specify the signal to check. Right, this just says, if, if the thing that triggered this process was a rising edge of this clock signal, then this if statement is true. And then we'll need our end if at the end here. Okay, now this little bit of code does exactly describe the behavior of a flip-flop. So whenever the clock changes, we're gonna run this process. And if it is a rising edge of the clock, then we will copy DD from D to Q, Q will get the value of D, and any other time, so if it's a falling edge, then we're not gonna run this if statement, we're not gonna update Q at all. So we've now created a process that models exactly the behavior of the flip-flop, so that anytime we have a rising edge, Q gets the value of D. But you might be thinking like, sure, well that, that describes a flip-flop, but I mean, this doesn't look like it built a flip-flop, it's just, it's just a process, like how did, you know, if I was to write A and B, that clearly makes an AND gate, but like how does this make a flip-flop? And so this is a crucial insight about VHDL. So, and other hardware description languages as well. So with VHDL, you were describing how you want the circuit to behave, at least if you're using behavioral modeling. And the synthesis tool will try to build it for you. So again, at least in behavioral modeling, structural modeling is different, but here, you're not telling the tool what to build. You're telling it what behavior you want, and it will try to build you something, build some kind of circuit that will implement that behavior. So yes, in this case, this description will actually produce a flip-flop. This is how you build a flip-flop in VHDL. And just to drive that home, let's go ahead and look at this in Radiant. So here I am in Radiant, and I've just copied this code in. So again, rising edge clock, Q gets the value of D. And I've gone ahead and synthesized this design. And we can go look at the schematic and see what it actually produced. So D and clock again are the inputs to the circuit, Q is the output, and it's produced this block that looks an awful lot like a flip-flop. As usual with Radiant, it's a little more complicated. They've added an R and an S signal. So here, R is this reset. So when you first turn the flip-flop on, that you have some way to guarantee that it goes to zero when you first start, for example. I think S is also a set signal if you wanted to guarantee that it was one or something when you started. Um, but Radiant has taken this process description and then produced an actual flip-flop that's gonna synthesize into the design and put that into the FPGA. So learning to do this well, so being able to write a process while thinking about what kind of hardware you're actually building um, is, is a difficult skill, right? It's like, it feels like you're writing this kind of sequential code um, within a process and then suddenly you're saying that's actually gonna turn into a circuit. Um, that is tricky and learning to do it well uh, is really the key to mastering VHDL and all hardware description languages. So if you actually understand this, then the difference between VHDL and Verilog and System Verilog and stuff will all kind, of, all kind of melt into the background. And if you get this skill down, you'll be able to use any of those languages very quickly to produce uh, effective sequential circuits of all kinds.